Alright, so let's take these ideas and apply them to word problems. Specifically, we're sticking with linear models here. So again, with word problems, the description will often be about describing a slope and intercept, where our slope is some rate of change and our intercept is some initial value. So we'll do one with graphing and then we'll do one algebraically. So we have a small business produces soap and lotion gift baskets, labor, utilities, and other fixed expenses cost $6,000 a month. Each basket costs $8 to produce and sells for $20. So how many baskets does this company need to sell in order to break even? So break even, this is where our revenue matches cost. So we're going to have an equation for cost here, and oops, sorry, where, <laughs> let's try that again. I got too excited with my math, my program shut down, come back, almost, here we go, okay, sorry about that, okay, so we're going to have an equation calculating cost. So cost is coming from, there's a fixed cost of $6,000 per month. And then we are adding on a cost of $8 per basket. So let's go ahead and call X the number of baskets. So here we would have 6,000 plus 8X, we'll be calculating cost. And let's go ahead and just set that equal to Y. And then for revenue, we will have a revenue that is 20 times the number of baskets. So $20 times X, because however many baskets we sell, we're making $20 per basket. All right, so we're gonna try this solving with um, graphing. I know I have the grid down here, but let's jump over to Desmos, because what we can do is we can use technology to help ourselves out. These equations are pretty complicated. Um, so with that, let's use technology. So my Desmos graphing calculator, we're taking y equals 6,000 plus 8x. And then for revenue, we're taking y equals 20x. And I can't see anything on the graph right now. Oh, there's my y equals 20x. But basically, my 6,000 plus 8x is huge. So I need to adjust it so I can actually see that intersection point. So what I'm going to do is there's this little wrench in the upper right hand corner called graph settings. I'm going to open that up and I'm just going to adjust my axes. So y axis, I want to see at least to 6,000. So let's go ahead and start the graph. Well, we can stick to like having the y-axis start at zero, but let's have it go up to, mm, let's have it go up to 7,000. We'll see how that does. And then in terms of the x-axis, yeah, let's see what's going on here from negative 12 to 40. Ooh, not quite. But actually, as I zoom out, this isn't too bad. All I want is that intersection point. So you can do is see out here near 500, there's an intersection point. So right there, 500 and 10,000. So what we can do is just search the graph. We might need to adjust those axes so you can see it more clearly, but really we just wanna grab that coordinate right there. So 5,000, 10,000, 500 and 10,000 is our answer. Typically with these problems, they won't specify the method that you have to use because all of them work to give us the same solution. So we could have done this algebraically to using substitution or elimination. Um, in fact, substitution wouldn't have been too bad here. So what this tells me is that to break even, so X is the number of baskets. And then that 10,000 is going to be the cost and revenue. Again, they need to be the same for this idea of break even. 
So we would be having a cost of $10,000, but also making a revenue of $10,000. So we would need to sell 500 baskets each month to break even. All right, let's do another example here. So Emily has just retired and has $600,000 in her retirement account that she needs to reallocate to produce income. So she's looking at two investments and one is a very safe guaranteed annuity that will provide 3% interest and a somewhat riskier bond fund. Ooh, I'm missing some information there. Sorry, missing that information that should be 7% interest. Okay. And it needs to produce $40,000 a year in interest to live on. Okay, so we also know how much we need each year. Okay, so how much should she invest into each account? So we have these two accounts. We have the safe account and the risky account. Overall, we have this total investment. Let's just make some notes here. Total investment of $600,000. We have account A, so the safe account would be taking 3% in, or sorry, adding on 3% interest to whatever's invested. And then the riskier account that is providing 7% interest. Not providing, sorry. 7% interest. Okay. So when we find that interest, we want that total interest to be 40,000. All right. So what we want to know is how much to invest in A and how much to invest in B. Now the total investments, if I take the investment into A plus that investment into B, that should total $600,000. Now in terms of interest, we're taking 3% interest of A, and to write that out, so we want to think about the decimal form of these percentages, so 3% is the equivalent of 0.03, 7% is the equivalent of 0 0.07. So if we take 3% of A, 0 0.03 of A, plus 0 0.07 of B, we want that total interest to be 40000 Okay, so what we're gonna do is solve the system of equations. Let's go ahead and we can choose between elimination and substitution here. I'm gonna go with substitution method just because the this first equation especially is set up nicely to solve for a single variable. So if I just take that and solve for a, I'm gonna go ahead and say a is equal to 600,000 minus b, and what I'm going to do is take that and substitute it into the second equation. So we're going to have 0 0.03 times 600,000 minus b plus 0 0.07b equals 40,000. We're going to distribute that 0 0.03 into our expression there. So 0 0.03 times 600,000 is 18,000. And then 0 0.03 times a negative b is minus 0 0.03b. And then we have the plus 0 0.07b equals 40,000. Okay, combining like terms, 18,000, so negative 0 0.03 plus 0 0.07 is a positive 0 0.04. B equals 40,000. Subtract 18,000 from both sides to get 22,000. Divide by 0 0.04, and we're going to get B equals 550,000, which means A is going to make up the difference to get to 600,000 which would be 50,000. So we would need to invest $550,000 into account B and $50,000 into account A 
to get this $40,000 of interest to live on each year.